I'm Stefan Papadakis, we're here at 2017 SEMA, and let's check out one of our drift engines. You know, we've talked about these engines before, but it's out of the car and it's all assembled right now. So, uh, cool intake manifold, it's pretty trick, and you're like, why is it shaped like this? So, throttle body opens, it's drive-by wire, and uh, you know, the air comes in here, and it goes into what this, this is like a pre-chamber. And the reason for this pre-chamber is we want the air to distribute equally into all four of the cylinders. And what happens is we've got the throttle body that say has 100% of the flow and then there's a, a narrow slot that leads from this pre-chamber into the plenum. And that slot has a certain percentage of flow relative to the throttle body. And all the air is not able to just shoot in to like the back cylinder, it actually has to equalize. And then once that air equalizes into the plenum, you've got an equal amount of air being pushed into each one of the, the, the four cylinders. So it's a way of, typically what will want to happen on an intake manifold is from the throttle body, the air comes in and wants to go into the back cylinder. Air doesn't want to make sharp turns, right? So when you have a throttle body here, traditionally, number four cylinder is going to get more air and number one cylinder is going to get the least and you'll have to add some fuel onto number four. That's why typically number four cylinder, or if you have an inline six, number six cylinder, those are the ones that usually blow up because those are the ones that get the most air and they're making the most power. Um, so this helps alleviate some of that. As far as injectors go, we've gotten to the point to where we can't make as much horsepower as we want with one injector. So we have two uh, per cylinder and we'll idle the car on one injector so it's just a little bit of fuel for idling and like some part throttle stuff. But once it goes into boost, uh, both injectors will be flowing and then so we can have a bunch of fuel uh, for the power that we want to make. And this intake manifold, this area is all cast, but we actually designed in CAD and then machined from a solid block of aluminum the, the billet uh, intake manifold here. Other cool stuff like on the outside of this is the dry sump oiling. So this is a pump that gets driven by the crankshaft. And in this pump, there are, it's called a five-stage pump. And so I'll describe what a five-stage pump is. So this oil pump is spinning half of the speed of the engine. So at 9,000 RPM, the pump is spinning 4,500 RPM. Uh, you don't want to spin the pump much faster than that because uh, it can start cavitating the oil. Cavitation means you start getting air bubbles in the oil, which is bad. You want to just be all fluid. So back to the stages. So five stages, there's actually a little stage here that you can see a line, each one of them. So each one of these four stages, four of the five, are sucking air from the oil pan, trying to keep all the oil out of the engine that doesn't need to be there. So the crankshaft's not slapping through this oil and heating it up or causing horsepower loss or whatever. It's actually getting sucked out by this, it goes out this big fitting and out back to the tank, oil tank. So the oil is actually kept in this dry sump tank that's not connected to the engine anymore. We have two and a half gallons in this external tank in another place in the car. Then this fifth stage, what this does is oil will get sucked in by this, what they call the pressure stage, and then it comes out and into the engine uh, through this right down here, there, there'll be a line in between the outlet, there's a filter and a cooler for the oil, and then it goes into the engine. So that's where the, the filter lives, the oil filter. And then once it goes into the engine, it goes you know, into the crankshaft and the bearings and the camshafts and everywhere it needs to go. Eventually it all makes its way back down into the bottom of the oil pan again. And then these four stages suck it out and it just, that's the life it lives. <laughs> Getting sucked out to the tank, back in, oils everything and then back again. Uh, we we uh, also have, what else? Down here, kind of jumping around a little bit, but we're kind of down here. So this is the nitrous. Uh, so there'll be a, a solenoid that turns on. So the bottle has the nitrous. The solenoid, which is like a, call it a, it's like a, a switch for gas. When that switch opens, nitrous comes into this little distribution block into all four of these little lines here. And then there's little jets that restrict the flow. So we can do like a 22 jet or a 24 jet and it, and it regulates how much 
nitrous is actually being injected. So if you're saying I got a 150 horsepower shock kit or a 200 horsepower, you would go larger on the jet sizes and allow more nitrous to flow in. The fuel comes from the injectors actually. So the ECU knows that the nitrous just turned on and adds a certain amount of fuel extra that we program in to compensate for the horsepower that the nitrous is making. So more nitrous, more fuel, more, more horsepower. Let's go over to the turbocharger side. So exhaust gases come out and uh, all four cylinders and go into the, what they call the turbine side, the hot side of the turbocharger. These little bungs that are cool to see, you're like, what are these for? So we can actually put O2 sensors on each one of the runners and see what the, the fuel ratio is on each individual cylinder because we can do individual cylinder trims, leaner or richer to make everything perfect. And then the other smaller bungs are for EGTs, exhaust gas temperature. So we can have, uh, we know the temperature of each one of the individual cylinders. Uh, these wastegates regulate boosts. So all this exhaust gas is coming in here, spinning the turbocharger, making boosts. But once you make as much boost as you are requiring, then these wastegates open and divert gases out. This is pretty much turbocharger 101. Uh, the reason why we use dual gates is because the way, the way this turbocharger is called tangential. So the turbocharger is actually divided all the way through, um, including the way that the manifold is made. So there's actually like, call it two cylinders here and two cylinders here. And you have to uh, release exhaust pressure from both sides. So that's why we have it here. The reason why it's on the turbine housing instead of on the manifold is because originally when we built this particular header, uh, we were using the internal wastegate in the turbocharger. Uh, but, but once we get into really high turbocharger or high turbo boost levels and high horsepower levels, it can't do a good job, as good of a job regulating as the external wastegates. So we just retrofitted wastegates onto the turbo, turbine housing. The new IM that we drift right now actually has the wastegates off of the manifold. Interestingly enough, it's the same power. It didn't, like you look at this, and you're like, ah, this is not the best way to do it. But the right way of doing it didn't seem to me any better turbocharger here always fun to go up and, and spin it and this is a little blow-off valve uh, so it's all internal so when you let off the throttle and there's all this boost in the intake manifold or sorry in the in the uh, the boosts the intercooler system instead of it coming back out the compressor it actually gets recirculated by the blow-off valve that's how a blow-off valve works you've got all this airflow going into the engine and you shut the throttle well, now that air has nowhere to go, and what that ends up causing is a thing called compressor surge. And that's when that boost pressure, instead of going into the engine, is actually coming out the, the intake of the turbocharger. And that's when you hear like that, that choo -choo 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 -choo. That's, the sound is actually, compressor surge is bad for turbochargers, and the air is coming in and out of the turbocharger here. The blow off valve is what helps protect the turbocharger and creates that like psh sound instead of the choo 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 sound. Uh, so yeah, thousand horsepower engine sitting on a stand. It's fun to do a little bit of a tour and uh, have a good time.